it's time to start. We have a lot of puzzlers, so we don't have any time to waste. So I'm starting here. My name is Anton. I come from uh, Tallinn, Estonia. It's Estland for local people and for Germans. It's a city older than Amsterdam, but the coolest thing is that it's uh, really close to the Kotlin Island. So it's less than 300 kilometers. So if you have a boat, of course. So uh, uh, about Kotlin. So uh, it took six years to develop it and uh, two more years since then. And uh, you can see the logo evolving. And uh, given the amount of time, it should be a perfect language for us. And uh, in the meantime, there is uh, some other companies who do rocket science. They uh, promise to do, uh, like, uh, uh, bring us to Mars in the same uh, amount of time. So pretty cool. Um, so what are programming puzzles? Who, have been, uh, who has heard a puzzler's talk before? Please raise your hands. OK, many of you. Cool. But uh, for, for the rest, I will explain it quickly. So uh, I will sh show you short programs with curious behavior in Kotlin. Uh, uh, I have errors and warnings disabled in my ID, so don't, don't expect any hints. And um, you will try to guess what do these programs print. Then uh, you vote for the correct answer by raising your hand. And then uh, I run, run this program, and we see what is the correct answer. And then the, uh, somebody of you who has voted for this answer will try to explain uh, what is uh, the, why, why is it so? And uh, I have some prizes here, like Kotlin flags, like this one, and some uh, liqueurs, traditional Estonian liqueurs, also as uh, uh, for, for, for the trouble. So, <laughs> and uh, lastly, of course, a big disclaimer, uh, don't do this at home. <laughs> so this is really bad code. I'm uh, teaching you bad things, so don't do this. Um, so, uh, and uh, Kotlin was really designed to avoid, avoid well-known Java puzzlers. So, uh, and the ideal languages don't have any. Kotlin is pragmatic. We heard it uh, yesterday at the keynote. It's not an ideal language. So all of the puzzlers are tested with the fresh Kotlin 1.3 RC and uh, even with progressive mode enabled. So, uh, are you ready? Yeah. The puzzlers are all on GitHub, so for you later to play, play with them. So let's get to the first one. So I hope you see I can make it a little bit larger, this one. So uh, it's, as you can see, it's a nonsense code. So uh, if, 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 you want, if you want any Java developer not joining your Kotlin effort in your company, then you, sh you should show this. And they will have a really good reason not to. So, uh, but uh, now, now you have to guess. So the code is not so long, so it's probably you managed to see it. So uh, will it print? Uh, Hello world, A, who thinks so? Really few people, very strange. Maybe you need to gather your, um, yourself and be uh, not so shy. So uh, who thinks it's B, hello world false? More hands, who thinks it will be C, hello world true? Even fewer hands than A, and so, but of course, as a Java developer, I would say this, this uh, nonsense should not compile. Who thinks so? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, at the puzzlers, uh, if you have an answer like that, you need to consider it really carefully. So let's now start, run the program. Drum roll, and it's hello world. So who, who wants to explain? I saw a hand there. Uh, please, please wait for the microphone, otherwise I don't hear. Thanks. So the, the print hello returns unit, but first it prints, so that goes on to standard out. Then uh, the print world uh, is evaluated, and it prints to standard out, and it also returns unit, and they both equal each other, so it's true. And then it evaluates the third one because they're all true, so it needs to check the third part. But as soon as you hit the return, it returns up to the hello function, so nothing else gets executed. And why can I write it here? At all? Uh, I guess, I'm not, I, I think that, well, the, you're, you're still evaluating an expression, right? Because return is still an expression. Yeah, well, what's, what's the return type of return expression? <laughs> well, you're returning a Boolean, right? Uh, but I guess return returns nothing. I thought, I thought you need to know it. <laughs> 
So I think I think you still earn the flag and uh, and an Estonian liqueur. Please uh, help me with bringing it. So uh, the thing is that uh, everything is an expression in Kotlin, except for assignment, which is an expression in other languages, but not in Kotlin. So uh, return actually the return type of return expression is nothing, and nothing it can be assigned to anything, basically to boolean as well. That's why you, you can make this code compile, but of course this return returns from the function earlier than uh, the second equal uh, uh, operator, equality operator can be executed. And that's why we get only hello world, then return, but if the program would continue, only then uh, this, the outer print would be executed, but it's not. So let's get to the next one. So. Next one is easy, not much code at all. So this one is probably the one that you could uh, run into in your own code. So think carefully. So we have a, a lot of numbers here. I can uh, make it easier for you by saying that this is exactly the min int, uh, the, the lowest possible integer that is uh, available in 32 bits. So, uh, and uh, we do increment it. So the question is, what will it print? What be, will be the result of all of this? So who thinks it will be like, like normally? One, one less? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. That's, uh, that's what you expect. So who thinks it will go even further down? Some people? OK. Who thinks it will become uh, unsigned in? We do have unsigned ins in Kotlin 1.3, right? So, OK, some hands. And who thinks that it will be completely something else? So, beware, this is the, the answer <laughs> in the puzzle. So, OK, there were, it wasn't the, the winner, the D. So, let's uh, run it. And it doesn't compile. So the correct answer is D. So who has raised the hand? So I saw a hand, see a hand there. Please wait for the microphone. Microphone is coming, probably, no? Uh, there, there, the fourth row. Hi. Uh, OK, so my guess is that uh, first the, so it, is this an int number, a positive int number? Uh, that it gets incremented, and then the whole expression go, uh, gets the minus. So uh, when it gets incremented, maybe it transforms to long? So yeah, that, that, that is the correct answer. Please yeah. bring him the flag and the liquor. So yeah, the thing is that this number, as you, as you know, the Max int is always, its absolute value is one less than the min int. And uh, that's why this number is actually a long in Kotlin. And uh, the thing is that the extension functions, they are uh, executed, they have a precedence over a unary minus operator, as you can see. So it is actually executed like this. And, uh, and because this is a long, uh, we just cannot pass it to the print int function. So that's why it doesn't work. So if we change it to a regular print, you can see that uh, I will run it for you. I will see that the correct answer will be B, which is not the best answer anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so to avoid this problem, uh, there is uh, actually most of the puzzlers, they can be fixed by magical symbols. So you need to prepare using them a lot. So just like that. Brackets save you from all the trouble. So keep that in mind. So let's take the next one. Next one is uh, about the new unsigned types in Kotlin. So we finally, we do have unsigned types. I'm pretty happy because I write networking code, and it's just too cumbersome to work with uh, bytes which are signed in Java. So, yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. So, uh, so yeah, and actually, I have a really good thing to you to say here. I had two puzzlers uh, for this conference prepared: one for unsigned integers, the other from for inline classes. Another new feature in uh, 
Kotlin 1.3, and both of them are now fixed in the compiler. So they just disappeared. So applause to JetBrains for fixing bugs. <laughs> but now gets, let's get back to the puzzler. So we have uh, an uh, unsigned int. We assign uh, zero. We have uh, literals as well for unsigned integers. And uh, you can uh, use the decrement operator on it, of course, because it's a var. And, uh, and you can convert it to int, and int is signed. So what do you think uh, this will produce? Will it be option A, minus 1, and then the maximum 32-bit number? Yeah, only some hands. Who thinks it will be B, 0, and the maximum number? Also, very few hands for some reason. OK, you're waiting for D, I know. So what's about C, 0 and minus 2? Uh, also some hands. And uh, the, the answer will not compile. So not too many, but OK. The rest think none of the above, right? So let's run it. And we have, uh, and actually, Actually, it's easy. It's kind of expected. Uh, and the thing is that this puzzler used to uh, give the answer C, which was a really puzzling thing, but it turned out to be a bug in the compiler. Thankfully, it, now it works. But now look at this. Uh, OK, now I wanted actually somebody to comment on it. Yeah, I saw a hand there. Please raise your hand again so the volunteers will see you. So in the first case, um, the increment happens after the printing. So x to int is passed to the printing. And in the second case, there is an overflow, which the positive value goes to the maximum value, basically, of uh, int in this case, or unsigned int. That's correct. Thank you. So the, the, the funniest thing is that if you read it in order, you, you see like, well, it should increment, decrement first, but, but it works like in C. And Kotlin still has the C legacy. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, you cannot write like this. So maybe it's, uh, it's actually this code will not compile. And uh, this is probably a question to JetBrains. Why is it so? Because this one looks more logical to me than the first one. So let's uh, take the next, next one. Next one, we discovered it in our company when we were making a coding dojo in Kotlin. We were implementing a game of life. Probably most of you know it. So uh, as you can see from this code, Kotlin really would use uh, like nicer array or a list uh, literals. But still, let's imagine we have some cells uh, with integers. And uh, in the game of life, you need to calculate how many neighbors uh, a cell has, like uh, this one. And depending on that, we, we, we know uh, will it die or will it uh, resurrect itself. So, uh, and here is a simplified code that we have written. And uh, we just print the number of uh, neighbors of this cell. So how do you think? Do, does this cell has six neighbors? Yeah, some, some, people think, some people believe the Kotlin compiler. And <laughs> who thinks it will be only three neighbors for some reason? Only some hands, even fewer hands. OK, then probably it should be two. What do you think? Yeah, only like a couple of hands. And of course, it should not compile. What do you think? Yeah, some people think that it will not compile. I, I think it should compile. It, it looks like a regular code. So, and it's three. <laughs> so. Uh, I think uh, I saw the hand here first. So I guess it's just combination of uh, unary plus and binary plus uh, on the second line. Uh, in first line, we have uh, all the uh, ones, uh, but in the second one, uh, we have uh, unary plus, which is uh, another line with another expression, etc. Et that's correct. That's correct. Unfortunately, uh, please give me, give me a flag and the bottle as well. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this is the price we pay for having no semicolons. So DSLs, blah, blah, it's all cool. But uh, if you write code like this, there is no warning, uh, no inspection in ID at the time 
that this uh, kind of code will not work. So fixing it is easy. So the thing is that uh, uh, Kotlin parser actually, it will scan uh, this first line. It will see that this line ends normally, so it doesn't need to add more stuff to it, and it just interprets the next lines as being completely separate expressions, uh, and their value is not uh, put anywhere. So the thing is uh, that in JavaScript, without semicolons, this code works correctly. It will produce six. I have checked it. But uh, in Kotlin, never do it and use the, like, uh, make sure you tell the compiler that uh, uh, your line is not complete when you are going to the next line. Otherwise, you can have trouble like this one. So let's get to the next one. And uh, uh, this one is submitted by also one of the speakers at this conference. So, and uh, this is also one of the bad buzzers that you can actually run into rather easily in your own code. So. Um, who thinks that basically we have the really nice feature here of Kotlin, the nullable uh, thing and a really nice operator, Elvis operator that uh, can uh, get you free from nulls and uh, unfortunately we still don't have the ternary operator in Kotlin that the Elvis operator is uh, just a shorthand of, but uh, never mind. So. Uh, who thinks that the sum of uh, x and y will be 3? It's kind of, yeah, some people think it should be 3. Uh, I don't know why. It doesn't look so to me. So who thinks it will be b, like our normal code? It should be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hands are coming. That's cool. And uh, who thinks it will be c, uh, 2? Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, and who thinks it will be 0? Yeah. A couple of guys. So I guess the thing is that many people have run into this pro problem already. So uh, who wants to explain? <laughs> uh, on the third row here, I think. So uh, x is nullable, but it actually has a value of 2. And sum equals and then uses Elvis operator. If the left side is not null, only then operate, uh, perform the right. So, in, because it isn't null, then it just returns two. So the keyword here is. Sorry. So the keyword of the problem here is. Operator uh, precedence, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, the thing is that uh, this is executed like this. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can have the price. And uh, yeah, this is really unfortunate because I think there are a lot of people actually has guessed the correct answer. So that means that they probably run into it. But the good news is that you had the same trouble in Java with ternary operator. It always also worked not the way as you expect to. So now the builders. So uh, the the coolest thing uh, in Kotlin, except for coroutines, uh, is builders. So. Uh, here we have a really simple example. Actually, this is the longest code uh, in this presentation, so relax. Uh, the coolest thing is that with these four lines, you can implement uh, the builder uh, that you can use like this to build the recipes of uh, uh, beers. You can add hops to them, and maybe we can easily add uh, more methods here to add more things like different yeasts or something like that. So we are building a, a simple IPA here with the, like the classical hops uh, cascade. We add 100 grams at 15 mi minutes of boiling, and we should get a pretty OK beer after that. So um, what do you think? Uh, and we use, of course, the data classes here. And data classes are also a really cool feature of the language. So uh, that's why it has the two string for us. And we'll get our beer or we'll get something else. So what do you think? Who thinks we will get our IPA? A. So not so enthusiastic. I've, I hope that we will. So uh, who thinks we'll get an uh, illegal argument exception for some reason? There is some. OK. Who thinks uh, it will not compile for some reason? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what you're thinking. OK. And something else? None of the above? Oh, even more people. So 
Let's uh, go and try. Will we have any nice IPAs here? Oh. And that's a problem. So uh, as you can see, we have lost our hops. We got something. We wanted an IPA, and we got something like Heineken. <laughs> so uh, who, who can explain? You were already so. I think there there was some. Yeah, the gentleman in blue, really in the back. Well, pretty simple. You wrote uh, hops name equals cascade, and not hops kind equals cascade. Yeah, nice, nice response. How to fix it? Right kind. Uh, okay, but how how can I fix it so that uh, you cannot uh, make a mistake here? Use vels instead of vars, pretty much, I think. What, what is it? Use vels instead of vars. Um, so use, make use of imm immutability so we can't break okay. this like it. OK, like but that. if uh, I think in the builder you cannot use it. But uh, yeah, I think it's still, it's, uh, or, OK, there's somebody who wants to answer the, uh, the, the second part of the question. So please bring him flag, and the liquor goes to the one who says how to fix our builder. So I think uh, I saw a guy here on the fifth row. I guess the problem is that the hops function has uh, the recipe as the receiver. It's an extension function. Yeah, it is. That, that is the problem. But uh, how to fix it, you know? Uh, remove that. Uh, if I remove that, I will break my builder. So, anyone else uh, who haven't answered yet? There is a guy behind there. Uh, if I no, uh, remember this correctly, you need to put this cell marker annotation yeah, on Yeah, that's correct. So, one Italian liquor goes here. So, um, yeah, let's uh, copy and paste it from the thing that I have here. So, there is a special annotation here. And uh, as you know, uh, Kotlin compiler and standard library actually uses a real bunch uh, of uh, annotations. And so uh, learning all these annotations means actually that you need to learn like a, another language. So if you use the DSL marker to define your own uh, annotation, and you use this annotation here uh, before your classes, sorry, your lang and beer lang here. So this is a cool feature that will actually make this code not compile. You can see it's not uh, highlighted anymore. So if I try to run it, now it will fail, and it will tell us that we made a mistake. And uh, this is actually quite important thing if you are creating your own builders. And now I know that I probably want to specify something else. So yeah, this DSL marker works by uh, using only the closest receiver and uh, excluding the members of the uh, further ex receiver. So let's take the next one. So this one was submitted by a guy from JetBrains, so beware. And, <laughs> and uh, you see we have a function, and we have the when, and when is the coolest statement or coolest uh, keyword in the Kotlin language, I think. And uh, so we just pass it uh, some booleans, both of them. And you know that when should really often be uh, exhaustive and this kind of things. But uh, what will this code print? So very easily, we pass it true first, and then we pass it false. So who thinks it will be option A? So some people. So who thinks it will be option B? So we lose the, yeah, there are some people. So we lose the second false. Who thinks we will lose the uppercase true? Uh, only one person thinks <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> and uh, who thinks it will be none of the above? So if it's a jet train puzzler, <laughs> it should, <laughs> should be even more broken than that. OK, this is the, the most popular answer. So let's get it running. And uh, option B is correct. So I saw a hand there first, I think. Uh, please keep it. 
Do you feel like this guy there? Yeah? <laughs> I do. So, so when you uh, put x near when in parentheses, uh, then it actually compares uh, the value in parentheses with the value that denotes the branch. So when x is false, then it can, uh, in comparison uh, with the uh, x equals true, and since x is false, then false is not equal to true, and so the first branch is executed, even if x is false. Yeah, that's correct. Please have a price, uh, both of them. And uh, so, yeah, the thing is, the, the stuff here, it, it should, should, shouldn't be a constant. It can be an expression, and of course, it will be evaluated in terms of x. So don't use x in both uh, when uh, and, uh, and down here. So it's either this or you use this and you skip the, the first part like this. So in this case, in both cases, it would work correctly. So yeah, be, be careful when you're using uh, when is too flexible, probably. So let's have the next one. So this one is also submitted by a guy who already got a prize today. <laughs> so uh, uh, imagine we have uh, many null safe languages, like, and Kotlin is one of them. I think Swift is the other one, right? And, uh, and we have uh, Kotlin extending null safe language, and we want to get the logo of Kotlin, which is an uppercase K. -K. So we create an instance of Kotlin, and we ask it for logo. And logo is implemented as the first character and uppercase of the name of the language. So really easy stuff. So uh, what do you think? Will we get our K? So option A. Yeah, some people still believe. Yeah, I, I want you, if, if you, yeah. Or maybe you need more time, yeah. Still, anyway, let's go to B, who thinks we get null pointer exception. Well, there are quite a few people. Uh, but you know, when we start using Kotlin, they tell us that uh, you will never get a null pointer exception, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who thinks it will be a legal state exception? So it's, uh, that, that's an option. If you can't get a null pointer exception, then it can be another one, maybe a Kotlin null pointer exception. <laughs> and uh, who thinks it will not compile? Yeah. I think so, too, because uh, there is a problem in this code, and uh, ideally it should not compile, but let's see. And we get the null pointer exception that we should never get in Kotlin. So it means that uh, you need to be careful still. You cannot uh, uh, believe in Kotlin too much. I already see a hand waving uh, back there. Yeah, two hands now waving, so the microphone. Uh, microphone is coming, so. And it's still coming. Since the primary constructor needs to actually call the super of the type, which is that abstract class, all of the initialization for the properties occurs in that init block, technically. So it's trying to initialize logo even though name hasn't been initialized. That's true. How to fix it? Um, you, so I actually had this problem happen to me. That's the only reason why I knew it. <laughs> that's so, why I like, so that's many why hands. I was like, Jesus, pick me. <laughs> but um, what I did was make everything actual like constructor arguments, and then you would have to explicitly override the constructor arguments. Yeah, you can do it so, or maybe the easier way to fix it is to like, uh, implement getters instead. So uh, then uh, they will be executed in uh, correct order, like lazily. So uh, otherwise, yeah, really, before we initialize the name, uh, we try to use it. And because uh, if we don't have a getter, this one is initialized right away. So uh, uh, please uh, give a flag and the, a bottle to the gentleman. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so don't write like this. It's uh, really easy to uh, skip the get here and uh, forget about the order of finished initialization. So still, you can get many null pointers in Kotlin. So uh, the next one. So uh, we have uh, 
mutable list of some, something here. Uh, we <laughs> like, <clears throat> and uh, we just uh, go through numbers from uh, one to three. We also we keep track of two um, twice, and we print uh, both uh, variables here. And uh, yeah, so I'm not commenting more to not to spoil <laughs> the puzzler. So look a little bit, a little bit at it, and. Uh, and uh, we can start voting. So, option A, one, two, three, all like we have written. Yeah, there are some people really nice. I also think that it would be that way. So, who thinks it B? Uh, we will, for some reason, get the three stuck. So, there are also some people, but fewer than the uh, A. And who thinks it will be C? We'll get the other three stuck. Yeah, some more people. And uh, who thinks it will be something else? Like Kotlin is a safe language? Uh, not too many people, so not too many people believe that Kotlin will actually fix all the bugs for you and will not let it compile. So let's now run it. And we got the first three stuck. So explanations, I think the guy here Actually, the increment for the E will be done during the uh, creation of the lambdas. And uh, after the creation, it will be already three. And the call for the lambda will be afterwards in for each operator. So uh, for all call, uh, E, I uh, will be already three. Yeah, that's correct. So basically, J here, it's, uh, it's like a vowel. So it's passed by value to the lambda. And i is a variable. It's, uh, it can be changed and is passed as a, um, by reference. And basically, we get the, the last number uh, when we execute these lambdas here. So here, we only capture the values and references, and then we execute it here. And so we get uh, the i will be stuck to the last value. So. Uh, the thing is that this is not possible in Java at all. So you cannot have a variable uh, that you capture inside of a lambda. But in Kotlin, you can. And uh, you know there is an even cooler language called JavaScript. And guess what, what the correct answer in JavaScript would be? It would be 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Because, <laughs> because in JavaScript, there is no uh, value types. So, so there is only variables that can be changed. So, yeah, I think I don't have any more flags left, right? So the, ah, I have only one, one here. So, yeah, there's only one flag and some couple of bottles. So not everyone will get a flag, sorry. So first ones were a priority. So we have a next puzzler. So seems like an easy one. So we have a function foo, takes two booleans, prints them, and we just run it with, oh, there's some strange thing here. That's unfortunate. But yeah, this is the puzzler. So we pass, uh, pass stuff there. Uh, so the results of these comparisons. So who thinks, uh, and uh, yeah, C is 3, A is 1. So basically, C is smaller. C is not smaller than A. So yeah. But do you think it'd still be true, true? So. Nobody? Really? First time? <laughs> OK. Who thinks it will be false, false? So there are some people, actually quite many. And who thinks it will be null, null? Because they should get, uh, appear from somewhere, like ghosts. No, not many people. And who thinks it will not compile? Uh, some people. So yeah, it's always a good option to try to answer. Let's see. And it really doesn't compile. So I think I saw a hand here. Uh, this function tries to parse A, uh, comma B as a generic types. And she gives some weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really true. As you can see, you can be beaten by your computer <laughs> like this. So yeah, the thing here is that really Kotlin, uh, I asked uh, Andre uh, earlier today what's, what the thing is. And uh, it actually, 
it's actually interpreted as A and B are type parameters of C. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it looks like a bug to me, but uh, Andres said that uh, it, was a, it was a decision to make it that way. Otherwise, the parser would be slower. It would need to uh, know much more about the stuff. And uh, that's why it was like a, uh, this kind of thing. So they, it unfortunately it won't be fixed. But uh, you can always use our favorite uh, tool for fixing uh, of your code. <laughs> <laughs> or or you can use uh, another tool here. Is like you can <laughs> do like this. <laughs> <laughs> also works. <laughs> Now we get a little bit uh, crazier than that. So uh, we have a data class here. Uh, so now we have the Andre's favorite feature here that he said that probably should be removed from the language is the delegation to, to the interfaces. I find it a really cool feature. I like it. Uh, you don't need to type a lot when you want to delegate to all the methods. So we have a container that actually uh, extends a list and uh, implements list is an interface. And we delegate all the methods of list uh, from container to the list, basically. And uh, now we have uh, another cool feature here is uh, destructuring. And we destructure our container into two variables. And, uh, and we just print them. So it can't be easier than that. Or <laughs> so who thinks we get the expected Kotlin 1, 2, 3? Option A. So, yeah, please raise your hands if you think so, because uh, obviously it's untrue, but, <laughs> but still, if you think so. So uh, what, who thinks it will be Kotlin 1? So we will lose the part of the list. Oh, there is a couple of hands. So who thinks it will be hello 1, 2? Oh, that's the popular answer. And who thinks it will be Kotlin 2? Uh, it's not a very popular answer. So let's see. And uh, this is the least popular answer. So you know, like uh, parts of the list, they just disappear. So any hands that I haven't seen yet? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I hear, have one here. Yeah, this one. So list has a component to extension already defined, and that takes precedence over the component to function that the data class would make. Uh, please repeat it again. So, so when you destructure, it's implemented by making an operator called component one, component yeah. two, component three. And lists have destructuring components for the first couple items, and those take precedence over the one that would be created by the data class. OK, but why the component 2 here is uh, delegated to uh, here, and why it is not the uh, component 2 of the container? Because component 2 is taking this, the second item from the list. Yeah, but why is it taking uh, So there are actually, I, I think you deserve the, <laughs> the bottle. So I will clarify that a little bit. Yeah, that's correct. So in order to implement the destructuring, the class needs to have uh, component one and component two methods. And uh, lists or all collections, they have them uh, by default. I actually don't know how many. But, uh, and the thing is that with component one, it's clear that uh, uh, so, and, but we delegate to lists. So there is a conflict of component one and component two uh, of list, and the component one and component two of the data class. And data class generates this component one and component two for you. So first component is uh, the outer class wins, which is a good thing. But the second component, because our items is private, we actually delegate to the component two of list. And uh, because we don't have component two uh, uh, available of container. So yeah. And that's why you get two from here. So please don't do that at home. <laughs> so next one. So I think this is one of the craziest that I have seen. So uh, we just have uh, uh, 
some extension function as generic that uh, normally uh, anything that we give it to, even a nullable, it casts it uh, to anything that we want. So, uh, yeah, really useful function. Why not to have it <laughs> in your code? And uh, now we have a magical number 42, which is cast to nothing. And uh, in case uh, you don't know what to take out from this talk, then remember that if you really mean it, you can use double, double, double bang. So, <laughs> so <laughs> if you really mean it, that you don't need a, don't want to have a null here. And uh, so, and then we try to put 87 into variable A and another magical number and just print it. So, who thinks it will be the number 87? Yes, some people, some hands are raising suspiciously. <laughs> and who thinks it will be Kotlin unit? Because it can. <laughs> there are some. Okay, who thinks it will be a class cast exception? Because it can even more. <laughs> so, and who thinks it should not compile? Because it's a nonsense code. Of course, this is the most popular answer. So, let's go. And, uh, and it just suddenly appears, <laughs> the Kotlin unit. So uh, any hands? That's a tough one. I saw one there. So here in the middle, please raise your hand again. Uh, so 42 as generic, uh, cast uh, n n safe cast to nothing is OK, because it's then just no. And then we unwrap it so that we could do something more, which would then lead to uh, a null pointer exception, or yeah, it would fail if we did something more. But we don't do anything more, so it's okay to do the exclamation marks. So if you were a compiler, would you compile it? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Difficult one. Uh, and then if without an else is not, uh, it's not an expression that returns the value. It's just an expression that returns unit. I, thi I think you can have the bottle, but the thing is that there is no logical answer here. <laughs> 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 so uh, I can explain it a little bit, because uh, actually the, the original author uh, commended it that way. And this guy actually knows his stuff, because he is, uh, I think he's writing it in a spec of the Kotlin or something. So the compiler uh, uses the data flow analysis very actively while compiling the code. And uh, it uses nothing as a shortcut that uh, if it gets nothing somewhere, uh, then uh, it should not be possible, because nothing cannot have any uh, instances. You see it has a private constructor. So compiler uses nothing as an optimization, and it uh, actually thinks that this code is unreachable. And it just allows you to skip the else. But, uh, Unfortunately, it is, uh, it is uh, reachable here, and, uh, and then we get units out of nowhere. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, Andre has commented that this one is probably can be fixed in the compiler. But, but fortunately, it's not something that you uh, bump into in your real code, I think. So let's uh, have a next one. And uh, it's about the objects. Object also is a... Uh, interesting feature of language, but what if we have, like, when we use dependency injection, we can have uh, sometimes a sub-cyclic dependencies. And uh, it actually usually means that you have a bad design. But uh, if we don't have a dependency injection, we have just uh, singleton objects here, uh, we can also have a cycle dependencies, or can we? So what do you think? So if we create B, passing C there, and we create C, passing B. So what, what will be the outcome? Who thinks we get null null? Because it shouldn't be possible to have a cycle like this. Nobody. Yeah, but you see there is a null, nullable type here. So uh, who thinks it will be C and null? No? Some hands. OK, who thinks it will be exception in initializer error from Java? Yeah, man, more hands already coming, and of course, what it can, else it can be. So a normal compiler should not allow to write this kind of nonsense, right? 
Yeah, we believe in you, Kotlin. So let's run it. And we get a C now. And uh, I wondered a lot why, why, it's not, why it's not null B. But uh, somebody can explain? Any hands? Yeah, there is a hand there. Uh, yeah, so I think it's basically the specification of the language. I think it's even an uh, example from the documentation that when you initialize objects, there are, if there are no cyclic dependencies, it can be, yeah, they are initialized correctly, but if there are some, there might be a strange results like such. For example, if any would not be nullable, then we would get initializer error, I think. So basically it is due to how the specification of the language works. Uh, during the object resolution. Yeah, but this kind of code probably should not compile. Yeah, but I agree. <laughs> you know, so yeah, the, actually the compiler does not initialize these objects in the same order that they appear in code. It tries to sort them to actually to uh, get this graph of uh, dependencies and then in initialize them in correct order. So in this case, it initializes uh, B with C first and uh, and then uh, it cannot provide the another value during initialization because it, it probably created C before B. But uh, the thing is that it compiles because we have the nullable type here. So if you uh, remove the question mark here, then this code will not compile. So compiler actually is nice to us. <laughs> so if it's not possible to put null there, it will not. So that's a good thing. And I think we are out of time, so I'll just leave you with the last one that I got uh, to know only last night, and I couldn't sleep, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so, uh, so this is the craziest code in Kotlin that I have seen. So if you have seen any JavaScript puzzlers, then it's nothing <laughs> compared to that. <laughs> but we are talking about the type safe language, you know, and it's, it is submitted actually by a JetBrains employee. So <laughs> Beware. So let's just go really, really quickly uh, with that. So who thinks it's unit? Almost nobody. Who, who thinks it's nothing? Because it's kind of more logical that it, it should be nothing. <laughs> who thinks it will not compile? Because it's, uh, it's not a code. It's not something, yeah. <laughs> it's not code. OK, and who thinks it will be none of the above? Uh, yeah, there are some hands. So let's just go quickly. And it will Kotlin unit. And uh, I think I leave it to you as a homework to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, thank you for being here. And uh, see more puzzlers in my GitHub repo. Please submit new ones uh, so we can have fun next year as well. And uh, thank you for being here. And uh, 